In my research, I explore how national human rights institutions are supporting the advocacy activities of disabled people's organisations. In my research, I find that national human rights institutions are supporting disabled people's organisations through advising on and advocating for reforms to the policy making process to ensure they are inclusive of disabled people. Also through advising on reforms to, to data collection processes to ensure they are capturing the lived experiences of disabled people. Through their own monitoring activities, NHRIs are often providing DPOs with a platform to highlight human rights abuses, in particular through their investigations and inquiry processes. National human rights institutions can also play a key role in supporting disabled people's organisations to develop their human rights capacities and their ability to utilise human rights standards in their advocacy. Whilst national human rights institutions do not generally provide formal training programmes for DPOs, they can provide informal learning opportunities, in particular the inclusion of representatives of disabled people within advisory committees can provide learning opportunities for individuals and for their organisations. NHRIs have collaborated effectively with disabled people's organisations in preparation for and during examinations by the CRPD committee. In doing so, NHRIs have at times provided opportunities for DPOs to come together to develop submissions to the CRPD committee. And there is some evidence that in the UK and Ireland this has contributed to the development of new coalitions. However, the ability of an NHRI to bring together DPOs with different perspectives is somewhat limited. Overall, I find that national human rights institutions need to reflect further on how, how they can integrate the principle of nothing about us without us throughout their work. In particular, NHRIs need to consider how they can include disabled people and their representative groups when developing their advice documents and when making decisions relating to strategic litigation.